Good morning! Another glorious day as we leave Thunder in the Smokies to head back to Atlanta. We discuss Jonathan Creek Inn and Villas, check out the Cannonball Run at Wheels Through Time, swing by Smoky Mountain Harley Davidson, and stop by Tallulah Gorge as we head back to Atlanta on today's Greybeard Biker. Okay, before we start this episode, let's discuss. I have been called a curmudgeon. I don't deny it. Hell, we've made a t-shirt for it. I see what's wrong with the situation first. Not that I don't appreciate when someone does a good job. I just think that if you do a good job, good, that's your job. I appreciate it, but, well, I expect it. If you're not going to do a good job, don't do it at all. Just me? Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. Now, I opened this way before today as I do a fourth review from this trip. Fifth if you count the opinion I gave on Cherokee Harley-Davidson. And one of these reviews is being called good. Haywood Smokehouse was adequate, Butts on the Creek a little less than adequate, Joey's Pancake House was good, and now, as we pack up to leave the hotel, Jonathan Creek Inn and Villas. But I'm not going to blow smoke. I give honest reviews with honest feedback. Okay, so the location of this hotel, motel, holiday inn, hotel, hotel, holiday inn. was great. And it was packed accordingly. The rooms are simple, mountain, rustic decor. You can tell it's not a corporate chain, which is, I think is nice. However, one of the reasons I chose this place was because it had a hot tub, and it doesn't. When I'm going through searching for a hotel that I'm going to stay at, there's several criteria. One, king bed, obviously. Two, does it have a hot tub? Three, does it have an indoor heated pool? These are just niceties that I'd like to have while I'm traveling. Then, of course, I look at the location of the hotel in comparison to wherever the rally is going to be. And, of course, I look at price. And I look at reviews, of course, and then availability. This place was supposed to have a hot tub. Actually, several hot tubs. But it doesn't. Sounds like it used to, but it doesn't anymore. But all the listings haven't been updated. Look at all of this on the internet. TripAdvisor, Facebook, nope, not actually here. But I also booked a room with a jacuzzi hot tub in the room. Are you kidding me? Look at how small this thing is. I tried to use it as a foot bath and it still didn't even come on. So quite disappointed here as well. Now, positives to it, it did have a great place to hang out with friends by the creek. If I was here with a club or a group of friends, this would be great. The beds slept well, the staff was nice, the rooms were clean. It did have an outdoor pool that was enclosed in a greenhouse-like covering. Uh, it was a little too cold for me, but uh, they did have an outdoor slash indoor pool. And the location was great. The price was great. I think it was like $80 a night. So aside from all things hot tub, I'd stay here again. But know this, the promise of hot tub, not real.
this my thoughts about the room. I think it's nice. It's got a uh, little vibe to it, almost like a almost like a cabin or something on the inside. Not quite. Just, um, it's uh, not the biggest. But it's not small. It's a good size, probably for what it is. Um, I thought it was cute. I mean, we're in the mountains. It's a little mountain place. Um, I like this. I like the layout of it because I mean, we can see the bike. We can see my truck from here, so it's nice and safe. The room was fine. It was good. I would have wanted there to be like one extra roll of toilet paper since they left us with like less than a half a roll when we got into the room. And um, but they were cool about giving us some toilet paper roll. Other than that, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's good. It wasn't brand new and fancy, but it's an ounce. Next, we went back to Joey's Pancake House because I told my wife how good it was. Then, me and my older son head to Wheels Through Time. We heard the motorcycle Cannonball Run was stopping through here. Now, if you remember the movie Cannonball Run with Burt Reynolds, the Cannonball Run is an illegal race across the country from the East Coast to the West Coast. They have check-ins along the way. The race is tracked via time and punch cards versus, you know, who crosses the finish line first. Everybody is going to get a card like this. When you leave, you're going to punch out here at this time clock. 3,000 miles roughly away from here is another time clock just like that at the Portofino Inn. And the difference between the two times is your time across the country. The record stands at 32 hours and 51 minutes. Believe it or not, those guys did break the 55 mile an hour speed limit. Oh, yeah! The thing with this one versus the movie is that it's being done on motorcycles. Vintage motorcycles. Made in 1930 something or earlier. So, we arrive at Wheels through time, waiting for the first rider.
waited for a long time before the first rider finally made it to our check-in point. Dun, dun, dun! Now, the Cannonball Run didn't actually start out as a car race the way that you would believe according to the movie. It was actually named after an endurance racer in 1914 named Erwin Cannonball Baker. He rode an Indian from San Diego to New York City. It took him 11 days. Now, the modern version of this motorcycle cannonball run was started in 2010 by Lonnie Isom. The rules for the race have been adjusted to be points driven rather than time driven. He changed it from a speed race to an endurance race where the riders would gain points and follow a prescribed route with multiple rally points across the country. Wheels Through Time was one of the earlier rally points of the race. This was the winner of the 2022 Cannonball Run.
Did you know that there were three Cannonball Run movies? Their third one was renamed because Burt Reynolds turned it down. So it was marketed as Speed Zone. Jamie Farr's character is the same, still has the Lambo and the humor, just no bandit. Now, it was marketed as Cannonball Run 3 Speed Zone in Japan, but somewhere along the way, it was also called Cannonball Fever, One for the Money, and Speed Zone Fever. I'm not sure about the whole story, haven't even seen the movie, but trivia. And all of them were based on Cannonball from 1976, which also has another name, Carquake. Wheel Free Time was a great check-in point for them, because if they needed their vintage bikes worked on, everything is here. Wheels Through Time is a vintage motorcycle museum in Nagy Valley, North Carolina, and they work on and rebuild vintage motorcycles.
need you. you and do. thank you for the information. Surely. <laughs> this is fantastic. It is. It is. I'm not going to stay here for all eight months either, though. Know. Fuck it. Now, we couldn't stay to watch all 100 some odd bikes check in, but we did see the first several. Now, as we left, we ran into a couple of them on the road. We are cannonballers. Are you one of those volleyballers? Cannonballers. Don't know why they missed the stop. Maybe the rules don't say that you have to check into each and every one. If you know more about these rules, let us know in the comments. Then we headed to Smoky Mountain Harley Davidson in Bryson, North Carolina as a stop on the way back to Atlanta.
Okay, so all the way back to, to Atlanta, we stopped by a spooky Mount Harry Davidson outpost. It's not a dealership, it is an outpost. So, the spooky Mount Harry Davidson, the dealership is elsewhere, and that's just their retail store. So, we did get you. It was another t-shirt specific retail shop that doesn't appear to sell motorcycles. We got caught in the rain as we were going through the mountains. We stopped by the DQ in Cleveland to wait out some of the rain. We then went by Tulula Gorge before making the final run through Moraine back into the Atlanta area. Now here's an interesting place on the way uh, between the Smoky Mountains and uh, Atlanta. It's called the School Bus Graveyard. Interesting little side thing to see on the side of the road.
Now, the very next weekend was Lake of the Ozarks Bike Fest, which is why this series was a little late getting posted. So, hit that notification bell to know when it's up, and if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And until then, stay free and keep it shiny side up.